Hi, and welcome to the X-22 Report. My name is Dave, and this is episode 148. And the title of today's episode is Alert, High Probability There Will Be a War Powers Act False Flag. And we can see that the main focus today is about this kinetic strike on Syria. I mean, the war drums are beating louder and louder. Uh, the president and the his staff are pushing to strike in Syria. They've sent destroyers, aircrafts, amphibious warships to Syria. They have Marines standing by. They have um, trained, paid mercenaries already on the border or inside of Syria. And they are looking and they are ready to strike. But the problem is is that they need the approval either from the UN or from Congress. The president cannot authorize any type of an attack. And this has been the problem. And what we're seeing in other places of the world is that the economic model that we all follow is starting to fall apart and crumble and collapse. We're seeing this in Portugal. We're seeing this in India. We're seeing this in the US, Greece, Cyprus, Spain, France, uh, UK. We're seeing it all over the place. Even though they continually tell us that things are getting better, things are not, and they're showing up in all different areas. But let's get started with the economic collapse news today. And we're going to go out to Portugal now because they, there was a report saying that Portugal was back on its feet. Portugal was doing better. And, you know, we heard this from uh, the president of France. Uh, we hear this from, you know, in Cyprus. They also told us, you know, when Greece got the first bailout that everything's okay now. But now in Portugal, that uh, they're reporting now that there was an anomaly uh, th that uh, that the GDP the GDP data um, is is not real and um, it looks like Portugal is going to sink back into recession by the end of the year or sooner and um, and everything they're looking at right now it's showing that there was some type of mistake or whatever calculation they were doing, it is not correct. And uh, one of the economists in Portugal says, I have no doubt that Portugal will return to a recession fairly soon and that we will remain there throughout 2014. Well, of course. I mean, President Hollande uh, from France, hopefully I'm pronouncing his name correctly, uh, has also said that everything is fine in France, and now we're finding out that it isn't. We see that Spain is not doing well, um, and uh, Italy is definitely not doing well. And we see this all around uh, the European nations. I mean, again, overall, the unemployment in the uh, European nations is 12%. Inside each country, uh, we're looking at anywhere from 20 to 30 percent unemployment and among the youths that are supposed to be you know the new blood coming up getting the jobs their unemployment is between 50 and 60 percent so how possibly could this get better it can't and what we're seeing now is that India is starting to collapse and we saw this uh, a couple uh, weeks ago when India put the capital controls on gold uh, I reported this uh, a couple of reports ago where people were not allowed to buy certain gold coins and things like that and uh, now we're starting to see uh, this take effect and uh, this goes on to say that the aftermath of the biggest crash in the Indian rupee in history is becoming clear businesses are scrambling to refine budgets import and export activity is disappearing as there is zero clarity what the actual transaction prices net of the FX are. Purchases of hard assets are exploding as people are desperate to protect what little purchasing power they have left. Capital controls are being instituted virtually everywhere and the overall economy, at least the part that is reliant on foreign trade flows, is grinding to a halt. 
and they are completely in collapse mode. Things are not going well, and those people who held on to their silver and gold and you know went into the black market to get more of it, they are preserving their wealth. And again, this is why people are out there today telling those people that are in the European nations and especially in America to purchase gold and silver. This is the insurance that will preserve your wealth. Paper money is just paper and ink. It has no real value. The value can disappear in a split second. Gold and silver has been around for thousands upon thousands of years, and every monetary system always reverts back to gold and silver. And we see this time and time again. Just like it's, I mean, just like you go and you purchase auto insurance and you just throw the money out the window if you don't have an accident and let's say you don't have an accident for 30 years that money is completely gone at least when you're buying gold and silver as an insurance policy you are physically holding on to it and it just doesn't go into the ether okay now here in America uh, I thought I, I saw this in the New York Times uh, that they have this great headline that home prices rose in June and confidence is climbing. This is in the mainstream media telling people that everything is okay in the housing market. And they all have, they had to go back to June to report this because if you move to August, the housing market is crashing. It's collapsing. It's not doing well. And it's, they're still trying to use the propaganda and the campaign tactics that Obama was using back in June and July, telling everyone that the housing market was doing well. But we can see uh, in Reuters, there was an article that said mortgage applications fall as rates hit 2013 high. And they're saying this again. And there was another article, and it's funny, the Reuters is starting to pick this up now, that the hu and I said this in previous reports, that we saw mortgage applications plunging. We saw the foot traffic to new home builders uh, starting to slow. We saw um, uh, interest rates rising. We saw uh, home furnishing and gardening stores reporting uh, slower and lower sales. And I said behind uh, the mortgage applications as they're plunging, uh, there's always a lag in time for the sales of homes. And now in Reuters today, we see U.S. housing recovery uh, loses a step as pending home sales fall. So we're starting to see these sales start to uh, decline, just like we thought they were going to do. Again, we're heading into winter and um, fall and winter when housing really uh, starts to uh, disappear. But this report goes on to say uh, contracts to uh, purchase previously owned U.S. homes fell for the second straight month in July, a sign that rising mortgage rates are taking the steam out of America's housing market recovery. The National Association of Realtors said today its pending home sales index based on contracts signed last month decreased by 1.3%. And uh, this was a, uh, the contracts fell across most of the country with losses concentrated in the Northeast and the West. And this is going to even uh, plunge even faster because what do we know that's going to happen? We know in the Northeast um, from a couple of reports I did uh, a while back uh, that they're going to start laying off people this fall in Wall Street, uh, on Wall Street, I should say, and it's roughly around 100,000 people because they're reducing everyone, uh, all the companies, about 15% of the people that work on Wall Street. All those people are not going to find jobs, and we have to remember this is going to push the unemployment rate much, much higher, and they are preparing for something. Something is going to happen this fall. I have said this back in episode 138 moving forward, and we are definitely going to see some type of collapse happen this fall or early winter. And this everything is being set up for this to happen. Okay. Now, now 
the way they're setting this up, I mean, we see that uh, uh, the U.S. government, central bankers, Israel, uh, the whole NATO uh, group of nations are using this chemical weapon uh, attack on uh, the Syrian people as their false flag to start the war. The Wall Street Journal has confirmed that um, the latest alleged chemical attacks in Syria um, was a fabrication spun up by the West-owned dubious intelligence agencies. And, you know, they, the way this came about was um, they received a, uh, uh, information from Israel saying that they intercepted chatter, communication uh, from the, Syria, the Syrian unit that oversees uh, Mr. Assad's chemical weapons, and they said it was his brother. They said they know a brigade it, that used the, the chemical weapons, and you know this is we, we they were just talking over an open line, and we just caught it, and um, this is this is the proof that we have. And this goes on to say that the National Security Advisor Susan Rice told UN Ambassador Samantha Power and other top officials that the UN mission was pointless because the chemical weapons evidence already was conclusive. Now, how was it conclusive if the UN didn't go in there and inspect the area? They're going on this, this ridiculous information that they intercepted open shatter that they were going to use chemical weapons. Do you, does anyone really think that the Syrian government and Assad's forces are that stupid to get on a payphone, call up everyone and tell them that they're going to use chemical weapons. It makes no sense, especially when Syria and Russia invited the UN Security Council into Syria to inspect for chemical weapons. And on the same time frame, when they arrived, all of a sudden chemical weapons were used. So it makes no sense whatsoever. And you know all this news that we hear that uh, Syria was keeping the, the UN Security Council away, they didn't want to inspect, that they took too much time, 48 hours, but this goes on to say um, that, that the US privately urged the UN to pull the inspectors out, setting the stage for President Barack Obama to pop, possibly move forward with a military response. Um, and um, this goes further and says if the U.S. chose to strike, it would do so with allies and without the U.N. Um, and they would do it without the U.N. because they knew that Russia was going to veto um, the plan to attack Syria. Now, we know we had that whole incident in Egypt with Morsi being thrown out. Um, and there was a coup going on, but the United States didn't want to call uh, the, the overthrow of Morsi a coup because they wanted to keep military aid flowing into the country because this was a strategic area. They didn't want to lose it. They were trying to put another puppet go government in there. Um, Saudi Arabia was trying to help. And um, right now, General um, al-Sisi says that no American warship or British um, is allowed through the Suez Canal um, that will wage war. And um, they are not going to give authorization to ships to pass through this. And this was in a French um, website. I translated it. And um, I have a link to the French website if you'd like to go over there and take a look. And also today, Cameron was denied mandate for UK military action in Syria. Um, British Premier David Cameron has no hope of support in the House of Commons uh, to get in involved with the U US military operation against Syria. So this entire thing is starting to fall apart. We know that this is a completely, uh, this was a complete false flag and the President of the United States does not have authorization to do anything right now. Yes, they moved um, uh, strategic assets. They have been in place for quite a while. They moved even more into place and they are preparing for something to happen. Now, China and Russia are warning uh, that if the US strikes Syria, there could be catastrophic consequences. And um, 
they Russia and China actually stepped up their warning against military intervention in Syria, with Moscow saying any such any such action it will not end well um, for uh, the U.S. and other NATO um, NATO countries. So we can see that. Russia and China, like we've been saying for such a long time now, are backing Iran and Syria, and they are giving warnings right now. If this goes any further, this is going to turn ugly. Now, there's a lot of talk of uh, Obama saying that we're going to do limited strikes, and um, you know they're going to be kinetic strikes. Now, let me ask everyone: if missiles were flying into whatever country you're in, I'm going to say the U.S., I'm in the U.S., if missiles were flying into your country, how would that be looked at by the officials of that country? That is an act of war. I mean, any way you look at it, if I was here in Chicago or New York or L.A. and I saw a missile flying in, hitting someplace around that area, there would be a huge response from whatever country you're in because it is an act of war. So the president is talking about doing limited strikes, which he does not have permission to do. He does not have permission to do what they call kinetic strikes. They can call it whatever they want. A strike is a strike is a strike. If you fire a missile into someone's country, it's an act of war. Syria never attacked the U.S., never attacked U.K., never t attacked Spain, France, um, Australia, nobody. They didn't attack anyone. And also, the UN inspectors are still figuring out and, and um, determining what happened in this area. So we don't, uh, the, the whole thing is still up in the air. Nobody knows anything yet. But, you know, the people, the powers that be, are so sure because they know what they planned and they know what they did to create this false flag. And if the president was going to do a limited strike into Syria, it would make sense that he would fire into the chemical weapons stash that's there. But that's not what he's going to do. They're not going to hit the chemical weapons. They're going to hit Assad's forces instead. Now, we have to think about this for a second. Why would they hit the forces but not the chemical weapon depot? which they're saying exists um, in, in Syria, and this is the depot they used um, to use chemical weapons. Well, we have to remember that the U.S. trained paid mercenaries in Jordan, and they've been training. They marched out from that area on the 17th and 19th and marched to Syria's uh, border or inside Syria because the U.S., again, cannot go in there. They are going to take out, at least they're going to try, take out Assad's forces with, uh, um, they're going to use uh, Tomahawk uh, cruise missiles uh, launched by the destroyers and try to take out the forces. This will allow the paid mercenary, which is the Syrian rebels that are already in the country, and the newly trained paid mer mercenaries, which are trained by the U.S., forces, but they're not U.S. troops, allow them to go into the country and overthrow Assad. This seems like this is what they're trying to accomplish here by doing a limited strike. And then again, I mean, this could get out of hand with Russia and China right there um, by them, by the U.S. government doing this. So what is happening now? There are marine units positioned near Syria. Uh, Marines in the Middle East, Africa, and Europe are poised to reach Syria within hours should the president order a strike on the country. So they're ready to move in and help out. Uh, Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel told BBC Television that the Defense Department has moved assets in place to be able to fulfill and comply with whatever option the president wishes to take. And the 26 Marine expeditionary unit currently near the Gulf of Aden, just south of Syria, um, 
is a uh, number is about 2200 marines there now in the meantime Russia is sending Syria their most advanced anti-ship missile system to destroy US ships and these are the P1 the P800 Onyx uh, missile systems and they are supersonic anti-ship cruise missiles um, that Russia is giving to Syria to help out here now then again we have to remember the president does not have any authorization to do anything so um, re, uh, representative uh, Jeff Duncan has signed a petition asking Obama to consult Congress first which he has to do before striking Syria which he does not have permission to do and um, he went on to say he wrote a letter dear president we strongly urge you to consult and receive authorization from Congress before ordering the use of military force in Syria if you deem that military action in Syria is necessary Congress can reconvene at your request and there's about 20 different representatives um, that sign this um, you know and I have it listed here on uh, the x22report.com site and these leaders are asking President Obama to honor the Constitution in addition to the war's powers resolution and seek con congressional approval before launching a mil military offensive on Syria and if we notice uh, the UK did this during the summer recess the US did this during summer recess because everyone's on summer recess in the United States Congress does not come back until after Labor Day so we're going to have to see how this plays out and what happens because right now everything is poised and just sitting there in a little while I'll discuss um, what I think will happen and uh, how this will go down um, if anything at all but let's move on here now cyber attacks <clears throat> in my report um, on uh, episode 138 I talk a lot about cyber attacks and in all the previous reports I, I talk a lot about cyber attacks what is happening in the last two weeks or so there are very strange things happening we know that there was a Google outage for about 30 minutes we know that Amazon had an outage New York Times was hit by uh, uh, a cyber attack yesterday and they claim it's from the Syrian Electronic Army which we know it really isn't um, but we'll we'll use SEA as an abbreviation for the Syrian Electronic Army and we know that Nasdaq had this glitch uh, that happened and uh, the SEC is going the SEC is going to meet after September 11th and we know the FBI has put out a private sector advisory letting all financial institutions and putting them on alert that a cyber attack might occur on September 11th and now we see that um, yesterday Netflix vines um, Airbnb were also hit and and um, they were also attacked and uh, we see that Twitter um, Huffington Post have been hit and uh, this one article uh, goes into uh, that the the Syrian electronic army when you do a, a who is lookup it looks like they have replaced who owns these domains with SEA as the Syrian electronic army so there are a lot of strange things happening on the internet with a lot of attacks a lot of glitches and um, this leads me to believe um, what I've been talking about that they are preparing for some type of attack during this fall and financial institutions will be hit now I know there was an FBI you know I just mentioned private sector advisory but if it doesn't happen on the 11th it doesn't mean it's not going to they're just putting it out there and this is what they suspect but it could come in October it could come in November speaking about November there is also a power grid drill to ward off to train against a 
eventual cyber attack on the power grid. We also understand that Janet Napolitano, when leaving office, warned about cyber attacks that are going to happen, not if, but when they're going to happen as she was leaving office. So there is a lot going on right now, and everything seems like it's building up to some type of an attack, a cyber attack, during this fall. And we've already had reports uh, that if they, if the United States can't get into Syria and get the war started, a representative from the Homeland Security has, all, has already warned uh, that these chemical weapons could fall into the hands of Al-Qaeda and make their way into the U.S. And there was a, uh, um, another report here that goes into saying that, you know, attack on Syria likely to trigger terrorist strikes against U.S. So if the U.S. does some type of limited strike, they're saying that it could inspire these terrorists to use chemical weapons within the United States and, you know, further terrorize the American people. And this would play right into the false flags that they are building upon right now because, again, the president does not have permission to strike Syria at this point. So he cannot do this. And some of the scenarios here, and this is why I said um, alert, high probability there will be a uh, War Powers Act false flag. I'm just going to read some of the things that I think might happen during this period. The U.S. Central bankers have been trying for years and years to get into Syria and Iran. They need to get in there to keep the U.S. dollar going because they need to have Syria and Iran trade oil in the U.S. dollar and implement a private Western Central Bank in these countries and remove the government and put in a puppet government in its place to keep the dollar propped up. We have the G20 meeting coming up September 5th and 6th. We have the fiscal budget on September 30th, which will not allow uh, the U.S. to supply the rebels with any type of weapons or aid because uh, the Obama administration would have to go back to Congress and plead their case again. So we have all these warships sitting outside uh, Syria and Iran. The president doesn't have permission. The U.N. did not give permission. The other nations want to go in, but um, uh, Cameron does not have permission in the UK to do anything. So right now, they're stuck. And these are the options that the president is actually looking at right now. He can have the ships just sit there and do nothing. And since he doesn't have permission and the chemical weapon story is falling apart, he can't really do anything. He can go ahead and do a limited strike without permission of Congress, but that's actually breaking the law, and there might be some type of uh, uh, blowback on that. Or there could be another false flag. And what do I mean by this? The War Powers Act, okay, there's a couple sections here. And the first one, okay, I read it yesterday, but I'll just go briefly over it. The president needs to get authorization from Congress or there has to be a national emergency created by an attack upon the United States. So what does this mean? This means the ships that are standing by uh, right outside Syria and Iran would have to get hit by some type of missile torpedo or attacked in some way that would cause the president to enact the War Powers Act because then he can go on and say the ship was attacked, it was damaged or sunk and this could bring the war to the next level. Now, I'm saying this because right now 
the story for chemical weapons is falling apart. The UN is not going to give permission to pr the president to go ahead uh, with this uh, attack on Syria. They haven't attacked any other country. Uh, they, the proof is not there. Uh, the, the, uh, the UK did not give permission to Cameron to go into and help with the US. So everything seems to be falling apart at this time. Now, the president can go ahead and, you know, tell him to fire. And we also know that, um, and this might happen. I mean, uh, this could happen because President uh, Assad is moving a lot of his forces away from certain areas. Now, could there be strikes in areas just to show that, oh, look, we did, you know, the U.S. did something and that is it? It, that could happen too. But, you know, what we know is that the central bankers have been trying to get into Iran and Syria for 20 plus years. And they are not going to stop. We know that Israel is having tons of drills. They're handing out gas masks. They put up their missile dome uh, system. And we know other countries are making preps. And we realize that this is eventually going to go full throttle. Will it happen at this period? If it does, it has to happen by this Friday for President Obama to make his move. Because otherwise, Congress is going to come back into session and uh, all of this is off the table and they would have to bring this to the next level. And that would be another false flag uh, either they can try the chemical weapon false flag again. I mean, I don't know how many times they're going to use this, but it's getting old. Uh, or they can try something here uh, in the U.S. or in the U.K. or in any other European nation. But one thing we do have to keep in mind is that this fall, the entire system is starting to collapse because uh, they know it because the taper is scheduled to happen because the central banks of central banks has told all central banks to start tapering. We know certain things are in place and um, we can see by the economy that things are not going well. They were telling us the housing market is rebounding, which we know it's not. They were telling us that retail sales were going through the roof, which they are not. They are telling us that Things are getting better. The economy is getting better. And they're saying it across Europe. And they're saying it in America. And we realize that these are all lies. We see from all the other countries, they're starting to report that everything is going to look like it's going to be turning downward um, and not moving up, which is better. And this we can see is heading to this place during this fall that something major is going to happen, especially with all of these glitches and strange internet uh, things happening, especially with the Syrian Electronic Army attacking all different sites, uh, incrementally brainwashing everyone and making them think it is the Syrians who are actually doing this. And we can definitely see that they are pushing this forward because they know what's happening. We understand that FEMA Region 3, which I reported on, uh, they are stockpiling supplies there. And all around the country, um, certain things are in motion where we see military assets moving across the country to different locations and it looks like they are preparing for something. Listen everyone, be well, be safe, and especially be prepared. Thanks a lot.